Welcome back to another video on my channel. In two recent videos, I explained in detail how a mechanical shutter and in contrast to that, an electronic shutter is working. And I was doing these videos in the context of the announcement of the new Nikon C9, which by the way, seems to be delayed in shipping, very likely due to the general supply chain problems we currently have due to COVID and certain geopolitical developments. In the comments under my videos, people said, okay, so now we know and understand how a mechanical shutter is working, how an electronic shutter is working. We understand the differences, the pros and the cons. But what about the third type of shutter you have, for instance, on the Hasselblad X camera system, namely leaf shutter. And a leaf shutter in contrast to a mechanical shutter is not sitting in the camera body, but is sitting in the lens. And this video is all about leaf shutter. I will show in detail how a leaf shutter is working, what the advantages and disadvantages are. We'll also look into what it means for flash synchronization. And now let's get started. I want now to illustrate or basically show in a demonstration how a leaf shutter is working and the leaf shutter, as I said before, is happening and sitting in the lens. And the camera I'm using for it is my Hasselblad X1D Mark II and the lens I've mounted is the Hasselblad XCD 80 millimeter, its widest open aperture is an f1.9. And if you look into the settings here, I'm using the following. I will go for the widest open aperture of f1.9. I will go for an exposure time of one over 50 seconds as in my other two videos where we looked into shutter, electronic and mechanical shutter. ISO 100 doesn't play any role, but I wanna go for a self timer. So I have some time to actually focus on the slow motion on the smartphone I'm using before the shutter opens and closes. And that's the setup we are going to use. I will also remove, of course, the lens hood here and then we have a better glimpse inside of that fantastic lens with a lot of glass and you will see in a moment how the leaf shutter is actually working and operating in that particular constellation. After switching the camera on, the camera is in live view and that means the leaf shutter is open, otherwise you would not see a live image in the electronic viewfinder and the LCD. The moment in time you press and release the shutter button, the leaf shutter in the lens becomes very active. The first thing that happens is that the leaf shutter closes. In this way, the camera gets prepared for taking exposure. As a next step, the leaf shutter opens again and stays open for the time we take exposure. In our case, that's one divided by 50 seconds. Exactly when the exposure time is over, the leaf shutter closes again. That means the camera has taken exposure with the specified parameters and the image has been taken and is now being stored on the SD card of the camera. The last step is that the leaf shutter needs to open again to actually prepare the camera for live view, which you see on the LCD in the electronic viewfinder, and you're ready for your next shot. I recorded this slow motion, which you just saw in my illustration, how the leaf shutter is working on the XCD 80 millimeter with a smartphone with more than 700 frames per second. So it's quite tricky to actually get this on record and uh, also the quality is not super high. It's just a 720p video, which you just saw. But let's step back for a moment. Let's think of the insights we gain from that slow motion video. First of all, as you saw in the slow motion, but also see here in this illustration from Hasselblad, the leaf shutter has four blades. Where we also see blades typically is on the aperture mechanism. And we'll come to that in the course of the video. Second, and that's very, very important. The way the light falls through the open or half open leaf shutter is through a central opening in contrast to what you have on mechanical shutters with a front and rear curtain. In order to better understand the difference and what it really means, let's quickly look into a mechanical shutter on a front and rear curtain mechanics like we have it in the Nikon C7 Mark II. The process on a front and rear curtain mechanical shutter looks like what you see here in a slow motion on the Nikon C7 Mark II. We have kind of the same steps in the process, but the difference is, first of all, the mechanical shutter on the Nikon C7 Mark II sits directly on top of the sensor, whereas in the leaf shutter, the shutter mechanism sits in the lens, so has a reasonable distance to the sensor. And the second difference is that in the mechanical shutter setup, we always have a rectangle area 
of the sensor exposed to light and a rectangle area or opening where light is falling onto the sensor. Whereas in the leaf shutter mechanism, we have a central opening and based on the distance we have from the shutter towards the sensor, there will always be light falling on the sensor, even if the leaf shutter is only open to some extent and not fully open. Let's repeat this fact with a little illustration here. Since the leaf shutter is a central opening and has quite some distance because it's sitting in the lens to the camera sensor, even if the leaf shutter is only a tiny little bit open in its central opening, the sensor will be exposed to light. For the next step in our thinking process, let's return our attention to the Nikon C7 Mark II, which has a classical mechanical shutter with a front and a rear curtain. These type of mechanical shutters are also called focal plane shutter, in contrast to a leaf shutter like we have it on the Hasselblad X1D and the X1D Mark II. Now, every focal plane shutter comes with a parameter related to flash photography, and that's the so-called flash sync speed. The flash sync speed is that shutter speed that if you go faster, then no longer the whole sensor will be simultaneously exposed to light, but you will see only a smaller rectangle area of the sensor being exposed to light based on a shutter speed beyond that flash sync speed in the way you see now in the following slow motion video. As we just saw in the specs of the Nikon C7 Mark II, the flash sync speed of that camera is 1 divided by 200 seconds. Now if we go faster, the following takes place, which you see now in slow motion, namely that the two curtains follow each other so quickly and so closely that only a smaller rectangle is exposed to light and no longer the full sensor. Based on that smaller opened rectangle, we have what people call light banding if we now use a shutter speed faster than a flash sync speed and try to apply flashlight to actually expose the sensor. As previously explained, on a leaf shutter we don't have that problem because the leaf shutter has a reasonable distance to the camera sensor and is not sitting like we have it on a focal plane shutter directly on top of the sensor. And based on that distance and the fact that the leaf shutter has a central opening, the sensor is always exposed to light and even if the leaf shutter is only open a little bit, the sensor will be exposed to light, which means your flash sync speed on a leaf shutter camera lens combo is way off faster than what you can achieve on a Nikon C7 Mark II for instance and all the other cameras who have focal plane shutter. When I had the spec sheet of the Hasselblad X1D Mark II on display a moment ago, basically the specification said that we can use the full range of shutter speed with a flash on the X1D Mark II. And that's clearly something we are going to live demo now and try it out. And the first thing we need to check here is if we go into the menu and uh, let's go here again on camera, let's go to exposure that we have deactivated here the electronic shutter. So this one is not checkboxed and that means we are on fully mechanical shutter, which means leaf shutter sitting in the lens. The flash I'm going to use is a flash from Nikon. It's the Speedlight SB5000. This flash is compatible with the Hasselblad X1D and the X1D Mark II because the hot shoes are compatible and will go for a very fast flash swing speed now with that camera and that Nikon flash here and repeat a little experiment I did in these two videos I mentioned at the beginning of this video, namely when I looked into electronic versus mechanical shutter on various cameras, namely the Nikon C7 Mark II, the still yet to come Nikon C9 and the Sony Alpha 1. I have mounted now the Hasselblad X1D Mark II on a tripod and the subject we are looking at here is a tiny little fan with two blades and in one of the blades there are actually LEDs integrated which you will see as lights when we switch on the fan later on. And first of all, let's go in the parameters for what we used before. Widest open aperture of 1.9, ISO 100 and a shutter speed of 1 over 50 seconds. Let's take exposure. This is a bit overexposed, but I don't care. Let's take a shot. Here we go. Let's have a look if this is crisp and sharp. Yes, that looks crisp and sharp, so all good. Now the fastest shutter speed we can get with mechanical shutter on the X1D Mark II is 1 divided by 2000 seconds. So let's try to find this here. Let's go this way here. And here's end of story, 1 divided by 2000 seconds. Let's take a shot. It's completely dark of course because we have now a very fast shutter speed and an ISO of 100. Let's nevertheless try to take the shot. 
You see the camera can still focus, but we don't see anything in the image here because the shutter speed is way off too fast for an ISO of 100. So let's bump up the ISO. Let's go here to, now you see actually in live view that we get exposure. Let's go to 6400 ISO. Let's take the shot again. And now we have our image. Now what is the disadvantage of what we just did? We finally got a nice shot. It's also brightly exposed. But clearly we have some noise in that image at an ISO of 6400. Now if you want to get the ISO down again to the level we had before, we actually need to use a flash. If our camera would have a focal plane shutter, that cannot be achieved. Because we saw before at the Nikon C7 Mark II for instance, 1 divided by 200 seconds is end of story for flash swing speed. On a leaf shutter camera like the Hasselblad X1D Mark II, we don't have that problem. We can leave here 1 divided by 2000 seconds, so very fast shutter speed and an ISO of 100. And if we mount the flash, based on what I explained before in the video, we can actually take that shot. So let's quickly mount the flash and let's take another shot. As you can see, the Speedlight SP5000 is now mounted. We have simple TTL, that means through the lens light metering. And let's now take the shot and let's see what happens. Very good. So we actually have now a shot. The frame is no longer dark. It's correctly exposed. It's sharp. It's crisp. All good. So we got what we wanted. And clearly that was only possible with a leaf shutter because otherwise we would never have been able to keep the ISO value at 100 as we did here based on a shutter speed of 1 divided by 2000 seconds. Maybe to round this up, let's quickly have a look at the electronic shutter in the Hasselblad X1D Mark II, which can go even faster than 1 divided by 2000 seconds. But what I want to show is not that it can go faster, but that the electronic shutter in the Hasselblad X1D and X1D Mark II is actually only good if you need still photography in still images where you want to avoid any noise coming from the leaf shutter, but you cannot use it for, let's say, fast moving subjects because the readout time of the sensor in the X1D Mark II is way off too slow and it will splinter your image in the way you see in a moment when we switch on the fan. So let's go into electronic shutter here. So let's go into the camera menu. Let's go to exposure and let's use the electronic shutter. And uh, now let's, of course, since I unmounted the flash already, let's bump up the ISO again to 3200. That's end of story for electronic shutter. Let's take a shot. Good, that looks good. One divided by 2000 seconds. Now let's switch on the fan and let's see what happens if we do that. With one divided by 2000 seconds shutter speed, we should actually be able to freeze the movement of the plates of this fan here. So let's try to do this. See, it has difficulties focusing, but now we got it. That is funny, isn't it? What you see here is a totally splintered image of that fan because the readout time of the sensor is not fast enough to actually keep the shape of the blades and the fan here. Now, if we switch again to mechanical shutter, let's quickly do this. Let's get the electronic shutter switched off. And if we mount the flash again, first of all, we turn down the ISO again to get a noise free image. So the flash is mounted again through the lens flash photography here. I also switched because the camera has not a really good autofocus. I switched to manual focus here and just adjusted my focus manually. And now let's take the shot with ISO 100 and one divided by 2000 seconds with a flash. Let's see what happens now. You remember the splintered image we saw before coming from electronic shutter based on a way of too slow readout time of the sensor. The movement of the fan is frozen with one divided by 2000 seconds. Looks actually pretty accurate here. So let's try to conclude what we have here and then let's quickly move on to how the aperture is playing together with the leaf shutter in these Hasselblad lenses. First of all, on the Hasselblad X1D Mark II, the readout time of the sensor is too slow to use the electronic shutter for freezing fast moving subjects. Second, luckily the X1D Mark II 
has a leaf shutter and the leaf shutter based on its construction and as explained before in the video allows actually for very fast shutter speed to be used with a flash. So we could actually freeze the movement of this LED fan with a very fast shutter speed of 1 divided by 2000 seconds but still at a very low ISO of 100 and with a flash. Summarizing the advantage of a leaf shutter over a focal plane shutter are easy based on everything I said. First of all, you have flash high speed sync in a very natural way based on the construction how a leaf shutter is actually made. Second, and that's something I have not mentioned so far, the durability of a leaf shutter typically is much better than the durability of a focal plane shutter. And for a focal plane shutter, you typically have, depending on the construction, between 150,000 and 250,000 shots, then very likely your shutter mechanism needs to be fixed or replaced. That's not the case for a leaf shutter sitting in a lens. You can shoot as many frames as you want, basically go on forever and you don't have to worry about durability. Last but not least, let's now look into the interplay between the aperture and the leaf shutter because they are both sitting in the lens. In order to get some insight how this is working, I repeat my slow motion, which I showed before, but this time I stop down the aperture from before widest open f1.9, now to an f16. Image taking starts again by closing the leaf shutter and then opening it for the time we specified in the settings for exposure time. And while I'm explaining what's going on here, I will repeatedly play that slow motion clip so you can follow and observe in the repetitions of the clip what's going on here. The first thing we recognize is that the leaf shutter is sitting right in front of the aperture plates. The second thing we observe here is that the aperture plates are more, of course, for, you know, circular bokeh on background lights than just the four blades we have on the leaf shutter. And the third is that you clearly see that I stopped down here to an F16 based on the much smaller circular opening between the aperture plates in the center of the lens. This brings me to the end of this tutorial. I hope you liked it and you were able to gain some insight from what I presented here, in particular from these slow motions and all the explanations around. I think a true game changer will come with the Nikon C9 because that's a camera with electronic shutter only and the readout time of the sensor is announced to be super fast. If you liked that video, don't forget to drop me a thumbs up as an appreciation for my work. Thanks for watching, stay tuned on my channel, there's always more to come. Stay safe and healthy and of course, peace out.